I'm here to talk to you about uh, contact lens-based sensing. As you heard from Emmett at the beginning, uh, Sentiment got approval for the Triggerfish device uh, in March 2016 through the de novo process. Uh, we have the first ever automated recording of ocular volume changes over 24 hours. Uh, it's proven safe and effective. You get a repeatable 24-hour profile. There's an individual signature produced. It's highly sensitive, patient and practitioner independent, as you'll see in a moment. And we're seeing and focusing on clinical benefits related to this new measurement, ocular volume change. We have somewhat up to 35 peer review publications that are in the literature to support the endpoints and the approvals that we've obtained, including the FDA approval. Um, the principle is as follows. We're not measuring pressure. What we're measuring is that the IOP exerts a force on the eye shell leading to ocular volume changes, and we're monitoring and measuring that change in ocular volume over the 24-hour period. So we're sensing through the ocular shell, and that is obviously influenced by the ocular biomechanics. The <coughs> recording is over 24 hours, so essentially you have a sleep lab without hospitalization, uh, just like a 24-hour ECG recording. Uh, the fit and form of the uh, contact lens and the recording apparatus is designed to give you that non-invasive view during particularly the sleep zone, which is very important. Uh, we have FDA approval and we're working towards PMD approval in Japan um, and we'll announce some uh, progress with that during this presentation. But key is that having established all of those measurements and those approvals, we're focused on strengthening our utility claims and using those to gain reimbursement for the device. So in terms of clinical benefits of the measurement, where are we focused? Well, we're focused on this new OVC as a new biomarker to help predict the course of glaucoma rather than just monitoring progression. So we're working to establish OVC as a supplement to IOP measurement, not as a replacement, but as a new measurement. We're also looking at it as a classifier to help with normal tension glaucoma patients, which predominate uh, predominantly uh, in the Japanese market, and we'll talk about that. And lastly, as a measure of effectiveness of treatment. So let's look at the first two and let me give you a quick summary of the evidence we have to give us confidence to move towards two prospective studies that we're planning at the moment. So if we look at um, progression, we believe the triggerfish has the potential through the ocular volume change measurement to help predict progression rather than just monitoring progression with a wait and see situation. And you see here two peer review publications that have indicated that. But I want to highlight the publication in ophthalmology that occurred uh, in um, 2016, the latest publication, which uh, generated a lot of interest uh, because with a patient population of 40 in this study, they were able to use the measurements on the triggerfish curve to predict or help predict the fast and slow progressions in a very meaningful way. The main uh, issue with that study is that we need to uh, take on board Dr. Galway Heath's comments after the publication, uh, where we need to uh, confirm and generalize the results in a bigger data set. Now, fortunately, within Sensimed, we have a huge data set of over 1,000 patients uh, with triggerfish recordings and visual field measurements. And we carved out from that data set 445 patients, over 10 times the size, and looked at those patients in the same way as Dr. Dimarius has done in that study. And we were able to confirm um, that those results still stood in this generalized patients in a registry where the patients came from 13 countries and were not in controlled trial situations. They were in a real-world population. So as a result of that, we have a lot of confidence that in a controlled study, 
we will be able to develop this uh, predictive element of the triggerfish uh, curve. In terms of the NTG classifier, if you go to Japan and you talk to the specialists, what you hear is they have to have another tool to help them with the uh, diagnosis of their patients because 92% of the patients they see have no elevated pressure and therefore they need a supplementary biomarker to help them with that classification. We believe based on some published data that we have such a potential biomarker measuring ocular volume change and going back to in-house data when we've looked at that from the registry again we've been able to show to a a fairly high level that we have a reasonably good classifier between healthy and POAG patients and normal tension and healthy patients. And those results, along with the published data I showed you, has resulted in significant interest in Japan to perform a longitudinal study. That interest uh, has resulted and has just convert, uh, closing a 10 million convertible loan, of which Seed, a major contact lens player in Japan, uh, invested in Sensimed to the level of half of that loan. We also have significant interest from the Glaucoma Society and we're working with PMDA in order to uh, do that study after PMDA approval. So the level of interest in Japan for this additional tool is very significant and has resulted in that investment. So in summary, as we look towards the clinical element of the Triggerfish device, there's clearly an unmet need for an additional biomarker to supplement IOP in order to classify and predict the course of disease. I think Sensomed is building an accumulating experience which indicated, indicates that it could make a significant contribution, both in terms of a classifier and a predictor, that evidence has resulted in an investment from a major Japanese player. And uh, we also believe, based on the publications we've shown, that we have the opportunity to predict fast versus slow progression as a categorizer. And we have advanced plans to run that study in the US. And we are looking for a US strategic partner to work with us in the same way as we partnered with Seed in Japan. The last thing to point out, that this is a platform technology. Sensomed have built a strong core competence in contact lens sensing and is the first company to make contact lens sensing a reality for patients. And we have the ability to expand the sensing capabilities using the same telemetry platform to look at 24-hour IOP or other sensing modalities. Thank you for your time. Thank you.